Begin the Mishnah on Daf Kuf Mem Omid Beis. Doctor Eliyahu Mishnah Hiniach Bonim Ubonis Vetumtum. A person that uh, passed away and uh, he leaves children, sons, daughters, and then a tumtum, which is a child that it's closed up. You can't see if he's a zachar or an akeva. Okay, so now this is based on the previous Mishnah where it spoke about the Yerusha. You have it? Kuf Mem Omid Beis the Mishnah. It spoke about the Yerusha, when you have sons and daughters, so because there's a condition, really sons are the ones that inherit, the daughters don't inherit at all. But there's a condition in the Ksube that the daughters have to be fed. So in the previous Mishnah, the first Mishnah of the Perik, we learned that when there's Nechassa Merube, when there's enough properties, so then the sons will inherit everything, and they take control, and then the daughters get fed from what the sons have. But if it's Nechassa Muatim, if there's not so much properties, and I'm going to explain before what that means, then the, you put aside the money for the daughters, and the, the daughters get what they need. And then the sons may be stuck and have to go and collect money for themselves. So over here, the mission explains how this applies not to this tumtum. This tumtum, we don't know if he's a zakhar or an akev, if he's a boy or a girl. So now, So if this is a case where the father left a lot of possessions, and here the zakharim are the ones that inherit, so then as kharim, doichim may say it's on the cave. So if this tumtum says, I want to inherit together with you, so they can push him away. They can push him to say, you belong with the Nekevis, because we don't know that you're a Zohar. On the other hand, the Chassam Muatim, if there's little possessions, little money, and then it's the Nekevis that get all this money for themselves, for the, for the Mezaynas to be fed. So and he says, or, or she says, whatever, the Tumtum says, that he wants to have, be fed together with them. So the Nekevis will say to him, you can't get fed with us. You go by the Zacharim and therefore wait uh, to see whatever is left for you. To, and if not, you're going to have to knock on doors together with the Zacharim to feed yourself. Dr. Mishnah Vaiter, another halacha regarding this uh, case of a person that leaves a child that's a tumtum. So it's not result in the Mishnah with a tumtum. Well, he can be, he's, he's going to get pushed off. He's going to get pushed off. Now, the, the, Gemara, the Gemara will explain what happens when he gets pushed off. So what does he get? Does he get anything or does he not get anything? Okay, the Gemara will explain. Let's see. Another case, a person when he's passing away says, according to the Rashbam, this is a person that uh, is healthy and he's just uh, saying who he wants to distribute his properties to. And there's a concept called mitzvah l'kayim divrei ames. Even not a shchiv a person that just says, this is who I want to give my properties to amongst my children. So there's a mitzvah to fulfill what he said. That's what the Rashbam here says. Other Rishayim say that this Ha'imer here is similar to what we had before, a Shchiv Mira, a person that's on his deathbed, and he says that he's giving to so-and-so this, and then even without any Kenyan, whatever he says is like, is like done. It's like the Kenyan, that this is the Takanas Chachamim, that the words of a Shchiv Mira should be like completely acquired. So he said, In Taylid Ishti Zachar, if my wife, which is giving birth, <coughs> if she gives birth to a Zachar, Yitl Mana. So the boy, he should get a, a Mana from me. Yalda Zachar, she gave birth to a Zachar, Yitl Mana. He takes uh, that Mana. Now, if he said, if it's going to be a Nekeva, the Bach adds, Im Nekeva, if she gives birth to a Nekeva, to a female, is then a Messiah. So, so the Nekeva should get double, should get 200. So now, Yalda Nekeva, so if she gave birth to a Nekeva, and they tell us Messiah, she takes 200. The Gemara will, uh, will discuss this. Why is the Mishnah giving this example where the uh, Nekeva has a double value of, of the Zachar? Why does he say two times, the, you know, she, she shall take, she shall give? No, it's saying one time. Again, if, what it's saying is, he's saying, if my wife gives birth to a Zohar, let him get one mana. And then if she actually gave birth to the Zohar, he gets that mana. Yeah. If she gives birth to Nekeva, let, her, let the Nekeva take 200. And then if she gave birth to Nekeva, the Nekeva takes 200. Now, if he said, Im Zachar Mana, if he said both, he said, Im Zachar, if my wife will give birth to a Zachar, then I'll get a Mana. Im Nekeva, if she gives birth to a Nekeva, a Masayim, then the Nekeva will get 200. The Yalda, Zachar and Nekeva, she gave birth to a Zachar and a Nekeva. So according to the Rashbam's Pshat, when it says here, Zachar and Nekeva, it means either or. If she gave birth to a Zachar or she gave birth to a Nekeva, the Rashbam does, brings, there is another Pshat, that Zachar and Nekeva means twins, right? But the Rashbam says, he, he doesn't accept this Pshat because he says, the person never spoke about twins. He said if his wife gives birth to a Zohar, or if his wife gives birth to a Nekev, he never spoke about twins. So Zohar, Neutl Mane, by a Zohar you get a Mane, Nekev and a Telus Masayim, by Nekev she'll get 200. Now, Yolda Tum Tum, here this is the main punchline of the whole thing, it's like the main punchline here is, Yolda Tum Tum ain't a Neutl, he doesn't take anything. So the, the Mishnah here is bringing the last case, it's really like, I know what you're asking, it's, it's the same like the previous case, but the Mishnah is trying to say that even though the father mentioned both, he mentioned Zohar and Akeva. 
And he said, the Zacha should take a mana and the Nekeva should take Masayim. So if you mention both, now the, the Tumtum is L'chayda, one yeah. of them. It's, he's either a Zacha or a Nekeva. No, he's either one. We, we don't, it's a Zacha, we don't know who, who he is. But, but he, should, he, should, he should get at least the, the least amount. He can't get 200, but at least he should get 100. So the Mishnah says, no. In such a case, even though the father said, Zacha gets 100 and the Nekeva gets 200, what does the Tumtum get? Zero. That's the Chiddush of the Mishnah. You may have thought he should get at least the less amount, but still, no. The Tumtum gets zero. That's a, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll address this. We'll see what that, that's yeah, the Chiddush of the Mishnah. Covered up, well, that's they're covered up. They're covered up. That Andreganes is where you see both Simon. Yeah, By the Tumtum, they're, they're covered and you can't see so you any Simon. You, you don't know, know exactly. So, any Neutel doesn't take anything. It's a similar similar thing, but again, this, the main chiddush is regarding the tumtum that he gets nothing. <laughs> now, imam, if the person said, "Kol mashatel ishti yitoil," whatever my wife gives birth to, so he, he should take or she should take the same amount. So then, is a yitoil. So then, even the tumtum is also a, he's a child that was born will also take whatever the person said. Now regarding this tumtum, if there's no son and there's no daughter, there's only a tumtum. So then, this tumtum will inherit everything. He's, uh, he's, he's the only Yairish, so then he yarshes everything. Okay, so now the Gemara go, starts with the first part of the Mishnah. What did it say in the first part of the Mishnah? That, that we push him away. So it's, what did it say in the Mishnah? That when there's the sons, and there's a lot of money, there's merubin, and therefore the sons inherit... So the sons could say to the tumtum, you don't belong with us. You go to the girls, and therefore you're not going to inherit with us. So it's mashma from the Mishnah, they push him to the girls, and v'shakal kebas, but then he's going to get fed like, like the daughters. That's what it's mashma. They push him to the... So he doesn't get the amount of the uh, zachar, which is more, which is the real inheritance, but he's going to get the less amount. There's a suffix. Is he a boy or a girl? So in the case of a suffix, he's going to get the, le- the lesser amount, which is to be like the girls. That's what it's mashma from the Mishnah. But so on this Gemara asks, what, what, is, what is the case that it says in the Sefer? Uh, when you have the father that said that if I gave, if my wife gives birth to a boy, let, let him get 100. If she gave birth to a girl, let the girl get 200. And then the Mishnah said, Yolda Tumtum, now if she gave birth to a Tumtum, and in Eitel, he takes zero. Why does he take zero? From the ratio of the Mishnah, you see that a Tumtum is a Suffolk. Suffolk, Zacha, Suffolk, Nekeva. So therefore, what does he get in that case of a Suffolk? The lesser amount of the Suffolk. In the Sefer, you see that he gets actually zero. What does that mean? So the Shabbat explains that must mean that in the Sefer, the Mishnah is saying that a Tumtum is not a Zacha and not a Nekeva. He's not a Suffolk, Zacha, Nekeva. He's actually a Beria Bifnei Atzma. He's a breed of his own. He's not a Zachar, not an Akeva. He's X, whatever. He's, he's a different, uh, he's, he's a different uh, Min Bechlal. And therefore he gets, he gets zero. So, what's, so, so you see here a steer in the Mishnah. Oh, my Rabbi, yes. Rabbi says, no, you misunderstood the Resha of the Mishnah. The Resha is saying the same thing. The Zachar and push him away from the Yerusha. And he goes by the Nekevis, but he doesn't get anything together with Nekevis. He, he doesn't get anything. That's what the Mishnah meant to say. Just like you see from the Sefer, that he's a very bifnei atzma, he gets zero. However, Rava, ma, but Rava says, no, doichin oisai v'yeshlai. In the reish of the Mishnah, it's saying that the Zacharim push him to the Nekevis, but together with the Nekevis, to be fed with them, the lesser amount that he does get. In other words, he's not a very bifnei atzma, he's a suffix, Zacharim Nekevis, so I'll get like a Nekevis. And now Rava says, v'seifer, in the Sefer of the Mishnah, where it says that the Tumtum gets zero, asam l'rab shimim v'gam liyol. The Sefer is actually a different opinion. It's, like, it's not the same Tana. That's following the opinion of Rabbi Shem Gamliel. And the Gemara brings the source of Rabbi Shem Gamliel's opinion. The Tanya or the Tanan. It says in the Mishnah, Yolda Tumtum Vadraigenes. In a case where it gave birth to a Tumtum and an Andraigenes. So this is talking about by a carbon, I believe. And it g- gives birth by, for a, a Tumtum or an Andraigenes. The animal is a Tumtum or an Andraigenes. So this is when a person says regarding an animal, that if this animal, I think it was talking about a Bechayr there, he says, if it gives birth as a uh, Zachar, so the person says, let it be a Karbanayla. If it's going to give birth as an Akeva, so let it be a Shlomim, because a, a Ayla cannot be, a Karbanayla cannot be an Akeva. So if, if it's going to be an Akeva, let it be a Shlomim. So what happens if the Behemoth ended up giving birth, not a Zachar, not an Akeva, it ended up giving birth a Tumtum and Andragonist, so Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, either one, either one, yeah. either, either a Tumtum or an Andragonist, yeah, right. So Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says, "Ain Kedusha Chala Alein." So there's no Kedusha here at all. Not a Kedusha of a Shlomim, not a Kedusha of an Eila. In other words, according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, you're not going to say that it's a suffix. So then, so then at least the lesser Kedusha should be Chal. No, there's no Kedusha at all because a Tumtum and an Andreganis is a Beri Bifnei Atzma. It's a Mim for himself. That's uh, the safe of the Mishnah.
Okay, so now the Gemara asks here, Rav, Meisvei Tumtum, so in a price it says that this Tumtum, Yerish Keben, he could inherit like a son, and Venizan Kebas, and he also could get fed like a daughter. That's what the price says. I said, what does this mean? Bishloy Malirava, oh, sorry, this is a raya to Rava, this is the question of Abaya. So the Gemara says, Bishloy Malirava, according to Rava, what it says here in this Brahis is understood. Why? Because Yairish Keben, when it says that a Tumtum could inherit his father like a son, when is that? Benachasim Muatim. It's when the daughters have the upper hand, because there's a little properties, and therefore they are the ones that get control for their Mizainis. So therefore, in such a case, he's going to have, he's going to be on the lower, he's going to be like the ones that are lower, which is the Zacharim. Because it's a suffix, so he goes together with this kharam to inherit. On the other hand, Veniz and Kebas, it also could be that it'll be fed like a daughter. When there's a lot of money, and the sons have the upper hand, they inherit, so he's going to have to go with the daughters to get less. Exactly like it said in our Mishnah. But El Abaye, however, according to Abaye, mine is in Kebas. Why is the Braise here saying that this Tumtum could get fed like a daughter? The Tumtum, according to Abaye, in the Pshara of the Mishnah, and the Gemara understands that the same is with his Braisa as well, that he's, he's not, not a Zohar, not a Nekeve, he's nothing. So therefore he shouldn't get fed, like, like Abai said, we're Deiche him, and he doesn't get anything. So why does the Braisa say there's Nizan Kabas? Taisus over here asks that the Gemara, the Gemara is asking here a question from this Braisa. Abai never said that every single Tana holds this. That a Tumtum is, is like, is a Bari Bifne Atzma. Abai just explained that, that it, we must say so in the Mishnah. If you want the ratio and the safe of the Mishnah to work together, but maybe the Braisa has a different opinion. Okay, so Taisus over here makes a cheshbin why the Gemara comes to the conclusion that this Braisa holds like the Mishnah, and therefore the Gemara is asking this. That according to Abaye, if he's a Bari Bifni Atzma, he shouldn't get anything. Okay, so now all the time, Mechle Rove, so the Gemara asks back and says, even according to Rove's reasoning, what was the lotion of the Braisa? The, the, the Braisa said, Yerish Keben, he inherits like a son. My Yerish Keben. Why, why does it say this Lashin in the Braise, Yairish Ke Ben, that he inherits like a son? The, the Lashin of the Braise is Mashma, that this Tumtum is actually Mamish like a son. That's the simple Mashma, so the Braise is saying that he had, that the Tumtum has a halacha that Yashin is like a son. How could you say Yashin is like a son? Even according to Rave, it's, it's just a suffix, and therefore in a case where there's Nechassim Merubim, so, or Nechassim Muatim rather, so, so he's going to get the lower hand like a son, but he's not Yairish Ke Ben. Why is the Braise using this Lashin of Yairish Ke Ben? Ella, so therefore the Gemara says, to answer Abai's opinion, what all the Bryce is saying is, that he would be fit to get like a son. In other words, he'll, he'll be pushed off to the sons, but he's not going to actually get, because we can't determine for sure that he is a son. We don't know either way. So therefore he's actually not going to end up getting, why? Because no, because really he's a Beri Bifnayatzma. Because really he's, uh, he's, 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 he can't, can't yashin like a son or like a daughter. So hachanami roi lizayin ve'enloi. So therefore when it says that he gets like a daughter, it also means that he's roi to get, but uh, he, does, he doesn't really get. Because really he's a beri b'fnei atzma. Okay, the Gemara goes to the next part of the Mishnah. When a person is speaking about his wife that's going to give birth. So the Mishnah says, mm-hmm. So if my wife gives birth to a boy, let the boy get a hundred. If my wife gives birth to a girl, let the girl give two hundred. So the Mishnah is using this example of a, of a father saying this. So the Mishnah is hinting something by this. Why is the Mishnah using this example that a daughter gets doubled from a, from a son? Because the Mishnah is trying to say that a daughter is double as good as having a, a boy. That's what it seems like. So that's going to be the discussion here in the Gemara. It says, the Gemara, a little memre, shall we say, the bas adifu lemi ben, that having a daughter is better than having a son. So the Gemara asks him this, but va'amar av yechen mishum rab shem ben yechai, a person that doesn't leave a son in the world that will inherit him, the Ebesha is filled with anger on this person. So some say that means that it's a sign that this person did something wrong and therefore the Ebesha caused this to happen to him. Others say that that when that happens, that the son doesn't yarshan him, so then that causes, that brings anger. Now, this is obviously in a case where the, um, according to Wamshat at least, that somebody shining him say that this is when the person had the ability and he didn't, he didn't do anything about it. He didn't, it wasn't the kind of mitzvah pir viribia par- properly. Uh, it, so here you clearly see that uh, to have a son is, is something which is necessary because otherwise the Abishu gets angry on the person even if he has daughters. Shanem, the Pasuk says, When you don't have a son, so that you transfer the inheritance to the daughter. So why does he use this term, Why doesn't it say give? Havarta means vein havarela evra. The word havartem could also mean anger. Shenema yem evra yemahu. That was a day of anger. So you see over here that it's much more important to have a son than to have a daughter. 
Answers the Gemara, Le'in Yin Yerusha, when it comes to inheritance, Ben Adif. So for this, the son is, is more important, because when the son inherits, he keeps the Yerusha within the same Shevet. We learned this Barichas in the previous Perik, it shouldn't go to a different uh, Shevet. So that's better. Le'in Yin Harvacha, Bita Adifale. What our mission is discussing is, regarding the father's responsibility to support his children. Where does a father have to give more support for his children, for a daughter, more than the son? Why? Because the son could work for himself, the son could make an income easier than the daughter can make an income. So therefore the mission is saying that the father is saying that he's going to give double the amount for his daughter than for the son. Now, the Gemara says another pshah, to Shmuel, Shmuel says, Hacha saskinon. When the mission is saying that it's better for a person to have a daughter than a, than a son, it's the firstborn, the mevakeres. Okay, the Rav Chizde, and this is based on what Rav Chizde said. The Amar Rav Chizde, Rav Chizde said, Bast Chila, person that has a daughter first, Simen Yafe Lebanim. It's a good sign for the sons that will follow afterwards. What's the reason for this? Ikadamri, some say, the Merabi Lacha, because the daughter that's the oldest will now help raise the, the boys and help uh, with, the, with the boys that follow. Very practical. Ve'ikadamri, others say, the law is Shaltebe that there shouldn't be a uh, iron hotter on the family. When people, when a person sees a family which is all boys, which can be said before, it's better to have boys, so then there could be iron hotter. But if there's a daughter first, so then there won't be as much as an iron hotter. Amar Avchiste, but then Avchiste said, Ulididi, for me, benas not differently me bani. The daughters are better for me than sons. Right, so, so, so the Gemara doesn't explain why, why he said that. And this is, the, it would, you could say that he was only talking about a firstborn, that the daughter is better, like Rav Chista himself said before. But it's mashma from his Lashon that he's saying that Pachlal, for him, daughters are better than boys. What's the reason for this? So uh, the, the Rishayim here say that Taisus over here brings because he had very good son-in-laws. Because he had such good daughters, so then they, they, he had very good son-in-laws, which were great, great Amirayim. So he said, therefore, look, my daughters ended up being better for me than my sons. Vibay Seymeh, the Gemara goes back again to explain the Mishnah, why the Mishnah is saying that the father is offering to support his daughters, he's giving them double than the sons. Another pshat, which is basically a similar pshat to what the Gemara says before, that it's more important for a father to support his daughters than to support his sons, but here the Gemara brings a Tana that says this, Hamani Rabbi Yehudahi. Rabbi Yehuda says that it's more important to support your daughters. Why? So the Gemara says, Hey Rabbi Yehuda, where do we see that Rabbi Yehuda says this? Oh, the Gemara first starts off maybe thinking to say that, a tri- that, that, that Rabbi Yehuda holds that it's better to have daughters than sons. Not only mitzah the support, but it's, it's, it's better. Daughters are better than sons. And the Gemara says, if that would be the case, where did Rabbi Yehuda say this? If you would say Rabbi Yehuda the Bakoil. It's, it's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion how we translate the word Bakoil that it says by Avram Avinu. The Tani will learn in the Brai said, when it says, V'ashem Be'rechas Avram Bakoil, next week's parasha, it says that the Ebesh to Benched Avram Bakoil. What's that Bakoil? With everything. Mm-hmm. So, Rab Meir, Rab Rabbe Meir says, Shulei Hoi Yolei Bas. The Bakoil is that he did not have a daughter. That's what it means. The Ebesh to Benches him with everything. He has everything, <coughs> even though he doesn't have a daughter. Rab Yehuda, Rab Yehuda says, no, on the contrary, Shulei Hoi Bas. Bakoil means that he had everything, including a daughter. U Bakoil Shema. She, he had a daughter that her name was Bakoil. So we see here that Rabbi Yudah says that Bakoil means that he did have a daughter. There's an advantage to Dafka having a daughter. So that shows that according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's, it's, it's part of the bracha of Avraham Avinu to have a daughter. But the Gemara though says, that doesn't prove that Rabbi Yudah holds that a daughter is better than a son. We see here that Rabbi Yudah holds that even a daughter was not lacking by Avraham Avinu. He had a son, Yitzchak, he had Yishmol, and he also had a daughter. But the Adifa Mi Ben, Man Shamatla, you don't see that Rabbi Yehuda says that a daughter is better than having a son. So this can't be the source of what we're saying, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda holds that a daughter is better than a son. El the Gemara says, Ha Rabbi Yehuda. When it said before that our mission is Rabbi Yehuda, we meant to say here, this Rabbi Yehuda, and here the point is, as I said before, similar to what the Gemara said in the beginning, that it's more important to support a daughter than to support a son. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraham, says, Mitzvah Lozen Esabonis. The, t- the first Tanei said, Rab Meir says, it's a mitzvah that you should support and you should feed your daughters. It's actually more important to support your sons. Why? Because the Aski B'tayda. Because your sons are learning Tayda. So therefore, if you're supporting them, you're supporting someone that's learning Tayda. That's Rab Meir's opinion. 
Rabbi Yudayim, Rabbi Yudayim says, no, it's the opposite. Mitzvah laws in Esabanim, it's a mitzvah for a person to support his sons. The Kavachayim Elabanes, and it's even more important to support your daughters. Why the Lelitzalan? So they shouldn't be disgraced by the fact that they have to go out and collect money for themselves. For a son to go out and collect money for himself, to earn money for himself is not such a disgrace as it is for the girls. Therefore, it's more important to support the, son, the, the daughters. That's uh, what our Mishnah was speaking about, according to Rabbi Yehuda, when he's saying that he's going to give his daughters double of what he's going to give his sons. Okay, now the Gemara, now, now, now that we settled this uh, shot in the Mishnah, the Gemara brings a Braise. It says the Gemara, Now in the Braise it says, Yol de Zohar in the Keva, a person gave birth to a Zohar and then a Keva. So Hazohar, so now simply this uh, Gemara understands that this Braise is in connection to what it said in the Mishnah. When the person said, if I give birth to a Zohar, the Zohar should get 100. If I give birth to a Nekeva, the Nekeva should get 200. And then what happened? The older Zohar and Nekeva gave birth to both, a Zohar and a Nekeva, twins. So now, Chayda, twins, or, yeah, or... So then, Hazohar, Neitl, Shisha, Dinarim. The Zohar is going to take six dinner. This is six golden Dinarim. How much is six golden Dinarim? It's actually 150 Zuz. That's a mana and a half. Every uh, dinner is, is 25 silver dinarim, or 25 zuz, which would mean that four dinarim is 100 zuz, which is one mana. Six dinarim is 150. Okay, that's a mana and a half. And the cave only takes uh, two, two dinarim. So the question is, but my, what is this talking about? Didn't the person say, if the, the Zacharim should take 100 and the Nekevis should take 200? So over here, if you gave birth to a Zacharim and a Nekeva, why are we dividing it this way? Why is the Zacharim taking 150 and the Nekeva is only taking 50? It doesn't make sense to divide it this way. Okay, so the Gemara explains that the case over here is as follows. Omer Ravashi, Ravashi said, I said over this Braise in front of Rav Kahane, and he explained to me that the case of what the father said in this Braise was, B'mesaris, that he twisted his words. He said something that c- comes to this conclusion. Why? Because the Oma, what this father here said is as follows. Zachar Tchila, if my wife gives birth first to a Zachar, then Masayim, then the Zacha will get 200, and the Keva Achar of Aleiklum. Then the Nekeva, which is born afterwards, twins, and the Nekeva comes after the Zacha, the Nekeva gets nothing. However, the Nekeva Tchila, if the Nekeva is born first, then Mana, the Nekeva should get one Mana, and Zachar Achareo, and then the Zacha that follows after the Nekeva, Mana, will also get a Mana. So the, the Zachar, whether he's born first or second, the, 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 the Zachar gets a, a Mana. The Nekeva, if the Nekeva is born second, then the Nekeva gets nothing. But if the Nekeva, again, if the Nekeva is born second, yeah, the Nekeva gets nothing. But if the Nekeva is born first, then the Nekeva gets a Zachar, right? So now what happened? For Yol, the Zachar Nekeva, this woman now gave birth twins to a Zachar and a Nekeva. But but it wasn't known which one was born first. So now what happens in such a case? Zachar, Shakal Mana Mimanavshach. So one mana, the Zohar definitely gets, because either way, the father said that the Zohar is getting a mana. Whether he's born first or second, the Zohar is getting a mana. So, that, so therefore he takes his mana. Now, Idoch, the rest, what happens with the rest? Idoch mana, the other mana, have a mana a little bit suffix. Now it's a suffix whether the Nekeva should be getting anything, because if the Nekeva was born second, the Nekeva gets nothing. Or if the Nekeva is born first, the Nekeva gets a mana. So that uh, last money is now a suffix. What happens with a case of a suffix? So therefore, in such a case where this is money that's in a suffix, so uh, we divide this. Okay, so this is, uh, the, the thesis over here says, this is going according to the opinion of Sumchis. It always says in Shas, anytime you have money that's a suffix, so you divide it. So therefore, over here, it ends up that the Zacha will get a money and a half, and the Nekeva will only get a half. Gemara brings another b'raise that comes out with an interesting conclusion of how much uh, the Zachar on Nekeva get. Now, in another b'raise it says, Yalda Zachar on Nekeva, the person gave, the, if she gave birth to a Zachar on Nekeva, Se'enloi ela mana. So he only gets a mana. Now, who's this talking about? It sounds like the Zachar only gets a mana. What case, Hechimishkachasa, what was this b'raise talking about? What did the father say that we're saying that you only get a mana? So here the Gemara explains this Braise is talking about a whole different story. Omer Avina Ravina says, Bimivasreini. This Braise is not a father that's saying what kind of money he's going to give to the child born. This is a father that's saying that I'm going to give to the one that brings me the good news about the birth, that I'm going to, I'm going to give him money. And this is what happened. The Tanya, 
Amavasreini, the one that uh, comes and says, whoever gives me the news, what my, what, what my wife gave birth for, to, im zacha, if the person gave me the news that my wife gave birth to a zacha, yitl mana, then I'll give him a mana for this good news. So then yol zacha, she gave birth to a zacha, so no yitl mana, he gets that mana. In the keva, if he's going to tell me that my wife gave birth to an keva, mana, then he'll get a mana as well, yol da nekeva, no yitl mana. So the person that gave this news will get a mana. <clears throat> now, if the person said, Yalda, uh, uh, Yalda, Zohar, Unekeva, the person comes to say, your wife gave birth <coughs> to a Zohar and to an Ekeva, so he only, mana. he only takes one mana. But why does he even take one mana? He never said that if he gives me the news that my wife gave birth to twins, Zohar and Ekeva should also get a mana. He said, if you... If you give me the news that my wife gave birth to a Zohar, you'll get a mana. Or in a cave, you'll get a mana. But twins? Maybe that's, uh, he didn't want to hear that. So maybe he never said that. So the Gemara says, no. The Oma Nami Im Zohar a cave Nami Yitl Mana. He also did say that as well. He said that if, he, if she gives birth to twins, whoever gives me the news of this will also get a mana. And that's what this Bryce was talking about. When it, Masreni, that person that gives him the news. So the Gemara says, well, if that's the case, El Lamutimai. So basically, whatever his wife gives birth to, the person who, that brings this news will get a mana. So why is the Bryce saying, Zachar, Nekeva? What, it should just simply say, the person said, what, what, you bring me news about my wife giving birth, you'll get a mana. So the Gemara says, no, he's trying to exclude Lemute Nefel. In, in a case where his wife gave birth to a Nefel, if it was a miscarriage, whether it was immediately a miscarriage or he, wasn't, he didn't live for 30 days, so in such a case, the person will not get anything. That's what this Bryce is talking about. Okay, now here the Braise begins, sorry, the Gemara that is starts a new subject. This is actually a sugi that's going to go the next uh, blot, which starts over here. Going back to what it said in the Mishnah, when a person is saying that my wife, which is pregnant, if she gives birth to a Zohar, the child born will get a hundred. If it's in a cave, the child born will get two hundred. So the Gemara will just begin a discussion about this. Let's see. Starts with the story. Ahuda Amala, with the Bisu, a person said to his wife, my possessions should go to this child that you're pregnant with. So Amar Ravone, so Ravone says, you can't say that, it doesn't work. Because have a ubar, you are giving away a gift to a fetus, which is not in the world yet. You can't give something to someone that's not in the world yet. Just like there's a concept of you can't sell something that doesn't exist in the world. You can't give something to somebody that's not yet born in the world. That was the statement of Rav Huna. So on this, Eisver Rav Nachman Rav Huna, Rav Nachman asks Rav Huna from what it said in our Mishnah. Ha'aymer, a person that comes and says, Ilm yalde ishti zacha, my wife gives birth to a zacha, yitl mana. He's going to get a mana. So then what happens? The Mishnah says, yalde zacha, netl mana. The child gets that mana. So the Mishnah clearly says, now the Mishnah goes on, the cave is so on, but the Mishnah is clearly saying that when you say that the child will get the fetus, the, the ubar, mubaris, will get a zachar, his words take effect, the child gets that mana. So you see that you could give a gift even to this uh, fetus, the child that's not in the world yet. So Rav Huna answered Rav Nachman, Mishnah Seinu, that what it said in our Mishnah, Eini Yedeya Mi Shana. I don't know who the Tana of our Mishnah is, because we, we don't have any source of any Tana that holds like what it says in our Mishnah, that you can give something to someone even though he's not in the world yet. Okay, now here the Gemara is going to go through a lengthy discussion trying to find who is the Tana of our Mishnah. In fact, the Gemara, Valei Malei, why wouldn't uh, Rav Huna answer Rav Nachman and say, Rav Meiri, that our Mishnah follows Rav Meiri's opinion. The Omar, Rav Meir, we have it many times already in Shas, Rav Meir holds, Odom makne dovar shaloi baloilam. A person could sell even something that doesn't exist in the world. The exa- example of Rav Meir is a person says that I'm selling you this palm tree that will produce fruits, even though there's no fruits here yet. The sale is, is, is uh, good, it takes effect. Also, another case of May says a person that says, When I become a ger, I'll marry you. It also, take, the condition will take effect. So, so therefore, you could say in our Mishnah as well that uh, it would take effect for this Uba, even though he's not in the world, according to Rab Meir's opinion. But the Gemara says you can't compare to what Rab Meir said. Rab Meir is saying that if there's something that doesn't exist yet in the world, so that you can give it as a gift to somebody that's already here. But but over here, the point is that you're trying to give a gift to a uberes for the ubar, for the fetus, that it's not born yet at all in the world. Do you see that Rav Meir said such a kind of thing? According to Rav Meir, if the person you're giving it to does not exist yet in the world, Rav Meir would agree that you can't give it at all. Okay, so now, 
uh, the Rishonim point out over here that the MS is even according to Rav Meir, as I just mentioned, one of the examples is when a person says about himself that I'm going to be Mokadeshus to you, even though I'm, I'm still a guy, but I'm going to become a Ger. So it's, it's also, too, uh, about, he's talking about himself, that he's, he's not even in the world yet, meaning the fact that he's Jewish is not, it doesn't even exist yet here in the world. So you do see that Rav Meir has such a concept. But Taisa says, I don't know if it's in Taisvis or in the Rishonim, that in, in such a case, the per, the, even though the person is not Jewish yet, but he's still, he's, he's here in the world. Over here we're talking about a Ubar that is, is not born yet. That's different. And that even Rav Meir, we don't have any source that Rav Meir holds in such a case, you can give a gift to a Ubar that's not born yet. So the Gemara tries another option, the lay Malay, why wouldn't Rav Hone say that our Mishnah follows the following opinion? Rabbi Yaisi, the, the Mishnah is Rabbi Yaisi, why? The Omar Ubar Kani. We see that Rabbi Yaisi says that a Ubar does acquire. Where do we see such a thing? Vietnam, because we learned in the Mishnah, this is a case of a, a woman that was married to a Kayan. What's Allah of a woman that's married to a Kayan? She can eat truma, like her husband, the Kayan, and uh, the Avadim, the Avadim that are owned by this um, Kayan could also eat truma. Now, what happened if her husband died and she's pregnant? She's pregnant. So now Ubar, that Ubar that she's, uh, that she's carrying, Paisal. That will take away the rights of the Eved Kanani to eat Truma. Why is that? Because as long as the Eved Kanani was owned by the father, so he was owned by a Kayin, so he can eat Truma. But now, after the father passes away, what happens? Who owns now this Eved Kanani? The Ubar that's in the mother's womb that's going to inherit this Eved Kanani. He already inherits this Eved Kanani, and now this is an Ubar in the mother's womb, which is a Yisraelis. She, she's not, she's a Yisraelis, and at this point, she's not married anymore to this client. Her husband, the client, died. She's a Yisraelis carrying the Ubar, and now the Evet Kanani is owned by this Ubar, so the Evet Kanani can't eat any truma anymore. And also, the Eina Michael, the halacha regarding a, a, a woman that was married to a Kayin, if she gives birth to a Zera, if she gives birth to a child that's a Kayin, so she could also continue eating truma, because her son being a Kayin. Just like a woman that's married to a Kayin can eat truma, a woman that has a son a Kayin can eat truma. But as long as she's still pregnant with him, if he wasn't born yet, she can't eat Roma. This is Rabbi Yaisi's opinion. So what's the Gemara taking out from this? What we see over here is that Rabbi Yaisi is saying that this woman that's pregnant, the, the Ubar, the fetus, is the one that inherits this Evet Kanani. And because the Evet Kanani is now owned by the Ubar, so the Evet Kanani can't eat Troma. So that shows that a Ubar inherits, even though he's not in the world yet. So he couldn't inherit. it. So therefore we could say that our Mishnah, that a father is saying that he's going to give a gift and it takes effect even though the Uber wasn't born yet, could be like Rabbi Yaisi's opinion. But the Gemara says it's not the same thing. Shani Yerusha Abomeileo. But Rabbi Yaisi is not talking about a person giving a gift. He's talking about a Yerusha, which happens automatically. The fact that a child inherits the father is without giving. It's just it's automatic thing that you inherit. In such a case, Rabbi Yaisi says that not only a child born inherits the father, even a fetus before he's born also inherits the father. But we don't, we don't have any source for our Mishnah that the father can give a gift to a uh, child that's not born yet. But the Gemara goes on and asks, Valei Malei, why wouldn't Rav Huna say, Rav Yechen ben Breiki, that our Mishnah follows Rav Yechen ben Breiki's opinion that we had earlier here in the previous Patek. The Oma, what did Rav Yechen ben Breiki say? That a father has the rights to give a gift to any child that he wants. Loishna Yerusha, Valoishna Matana. Not only could a father give to any son or anyone, anyone that's uh, fit to inherit him, he could give to one over the other. Not only as a gift, he can give it and say that he should inherit me over another child. It's not as we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei says, Im Omar al Yorishai. If the father comes and says, regarding anybody that's fit to inherit him, that only he should inherit me and not another, the word of Kayamin, his words take effect. So the Gemara now is understanding this expression, Roy Lu Yorishai, that means even before that child is born. If a father wants to come and say, regarding his wife, which is pregnant, that this child that you're pregnant with, that he's Roy to Yarshin me and he should get everything from me, the words of the father take effect. So we see Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei says, you can give it even to a uh, fetus before it's born. So the Gemara says, no, Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei didn't mean to say that. When does Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei say that a father could, could change the Yerusha, give it to one and not to another? That's only after the child is born. Roy Le Yerusha didn't mean that he wasn't born yet. He means he can't give it to a stranger as a Yerusha. It has to be someone that's already born. But someone that's not born yet. According to Rabbi Yechonim Ebrei, we don't see that he says such a thing. Mi Yama, did he ever say such a thing? But the Gemara still presses on and says, Why wouldn't the uh, 
why wouldn't Rav Hone explain that who is the Tan of our mission that you can give to even a fides as well? Why wouldn't he say that it's Rav Yechenim and Berekihi? That it is Rav Yechenim and Berekihi that we just mentioned, that the father can give it to a, uh, he can give Yerusha to whoever he wants. And the Savala Rav Yaisi. And Rav Yechenim and Berekihi also holds like Rav Yaisi that when it comes to Yerusha, as we saw before, Rav Yechenim's opinion regarding Yerusha is that a child born and an unborn child has the same Allah as Yerusha, for, for Yerusha. So, on one hand, he holds like Rabbi Yaisi that the born child and the unborn child is the same Allah as when it comes to Yerusha. And therefore, according to Rabbi Yechenim and Breke, the father has the rights to say that the Yerusha is going to go to the unborn child. Because when, when it comes to Yerusha, the born and the unborn child is the same thing. So maybe if, if you put together Rabbi Yechenim and Breke and Rabbi Yaisi, we could say that the father can give to this unborn child. So the Gemara says, no, but the reason Rabbi Yechenim didn't say this is because me aim at the Savala. We, we don't find any source that Rabbi Yechenim and Breka holds like Rabbi Yaisi that we could uh, put these two opinions together. So therefore he didn't, he didn't give him this answer. Okay, the Gemara here is going to go on, try a, a, a few more options to see who the Tanabra mission is. Okay, this, so he continues the next stuff.